welcome to the session so in this particular video we will talk about the implementation of selection procedure so so far we have discussed that what's the problem statement behind that majorly we need to find out the kth smallest element present in an array then we try to use the concept of partitioning algorithm that we already have understood in our quick sort part with this particular question and then we understood the logic behind that the intuition behind that followed by the pseudo code and the recurrence relation finally we have concluded that whenever we are encountering a best case scenario means on the left or the right side of our subtree we will be having equal number of elements when the time complexity of this approach is big often and if we are encountering a worst case scenario then at that point of time it will be nothing but big of n square right so i think today is the right time that we should discuss about the implementation for the same and i am expecting from everyone that you guys already have tried at least once the implementation on your own and maybe maximum number of students of uh, this batch already have covered up the implementation pretty well those who are facing some trouble this is video this video is specifically for you all please try to see where you are doing mistake because i think that doing the mistake is completely fine but after doing the mistake if you are not uh, rectifying that that is a big trouble right so please try to see this particular code very well and then uh, uh, see your mistake where you are doing wrong and then try to rectify that right this is how basically everyone we uh, everyone supposed to learn so here let me write as usual the driver code first okay and here we will be having the array so let me take the array for example 20 70 50 48 98 12 right? 10 43 like that right now here what we can do is that what is the value of k which is 2 so here mainly we want the second smallest element this is the simple meaning of that so if i will just let me uh, write the uh, sorted array just for my sake of uh, simplicity it will be 10 followed by it will be 20 followed by it will be no it will be 12 it will be 20 after that i think it will be 43 after that it will be 48 after that it will be 70 and i think after that it will be 40 not 48 uh here we skipped something 50 is there afterwards we will be having 70 so how many number of elements do we have 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so 3 4 5 6 7 it means we are we are missing somehow one element and that is 98 correct so somehow this is the first element right this is the second element third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth perfect so now we will be having first smallest as 10 second smallest as 12 third smallest is 20 fourth smallest as 43 fifth smallest as 48 sixth smallest as 50 seventh smallest as 70 and eighth smallest as 98 these are the eight elements that we have perfect so let me take one variable and inside that thing we can call the function name will be selection procedure and here we can pass the value r a r starting index we can take p ending index we can take q and the value of k we can initialize the value of p as 0 starting index the value of q as length of r minus 1 right and finally what we can do is that we can simply print the result you can also pass some statement for the clarity that is uh k smallest element right in an array is something like that and finally you can print the result perfect so this is here where the i would say function calling happened so let me now just define the function so there comes a function definition so here comes a function definition so def and here we will be having the selection procedure here we will be having the selection procedure and inside that what we can do we can simply say that if the value of p is less than q do one thing for us or what you can do uh, apart from that is if the length of the r is equal equal to 1 you can can we say that it's a small problem 
at that point of time simply return the value of r of p otherwise what we can do is that we can simply call calculate m which is we can do with the help of calling the partition algorithm which will give us the position of the pivot element right so here we can call the r the we can take the value p we can take the value q as well correct and then we can call the function uh no here we can now do the comparison if the value of m is equal equal to k we can simply return the value of r of m minus 1 correct these things i have already explained in my last video so i hope everyone is able to recall that elif the value of m is less than k meaning that the value of k that i am looking for is greater so it will be pres present at the right side so what i can say i can simply return r followed by a uh, sorry i can simply return selection procedure and inside that the parameters will get changed r and the value will start from m will go until q k will remain same this is something which i can say is the recursive call recursive call that to towards the right side of the pivot element can i say perfect pivot element great otherwise in else case obviously there will be a recursive call i can say but that is now towards the left side of the pivot element correct so here what we can do is that we can simply return selection procedure here and here we can pass r the value will start from p will go until the value of m minus 2 k will remain as it is now the, now the last task is to define the partition algorithm so this is the function definition of selection procedure can i say now in this particular case if you will observe we are calling the there is a function calling of the partition algorithm function calling of partition function now for that there is one more thing which is required we need to define this function so there will be a function definition of partition function right so basically we can define the partition method here where we will be having the value r we will be having the value p and the q what we can say here i is equals to p the value of pivot is something which is equals to r of p and here we can start within the range from i plus 1 and this will go until the value of q plus 1 i hope it is clear this is same as what we have understood in our quick sort algorithm right so now we can just compare if the value of r of j is somewhere less than equals to the pivot element that we have first of all we need to update the value of i and after that we need, we need to do the swap between the value of r of i and the value of r of j so let's do that r of j which is equals to r of j followed by r of i perfect and after we will move out of this for loop there is a final swap which is required between the value of r of i and the pivot element that we have so that also we can do right once it is done we can finally return the position not the index position of the pivot element that we have so it will return the value of i plus 1 perfect so now let's try to run this code now we have entered the two value right so the second smallest came out to be fine let me enter 7 so seventh smallest element will be 70 let me enter 8 here it will be 98 let me enter 4 here it is 43 which is correct right let me enter 3 here so i am just referring the uh, position number and the table that we have and i think we are getting the correct result only so this is the way this is the approach with the help of which we will be able to get the kth smallest element so this is known as a selection procedure approach using a divide and conquer paradigm so here you can say it's a simple implementation of selection procedure yes we can do this particular same question with the help of other programming other uh, i would say uh, 
methods as well other approaches as well for example using a max heap or a min heap concept also you can do the same thing but i want to basically tell you how we can do the, the, this thing using a uh, basically divide and conquer approach i want to share with you how it become an application of divide and conquer and that's the major reason i have tried to uh, explain you this concept this is also one of the most optimized approach and i hope that i am making sense to everyone again this is very important question for a, for an interview prospective specifically so if you still have any sort of doubt either by doing the while doing the implementation or while explaining the concept in the previous video please do ask from me and i will for sure try to resolve it as soon as possible right with this happy learning to all bye bye everyone i'll see you all in my next upcoming video